Bottom left of Cloud Kingdom, uh, the Prime player, the Protoss in red, yes. Creator. Creator Prime up against a Terran. Starting to the top right of Cloud Kingdom, we have in blue the Terran player, former TSL Terran, he is. Quantic Center. This is a pretty cool match we're about to see. Now, does Center go for gas and try to beat Creator before he can play his game? Creator's game is the mid and late game. He'll defend any drop you send in his base. He'll storm your army crazily with excellent spreading. He will get Colossi out. He'll even hit you occasionally with that two base timing. Center may just say, no, I don't want to face this and take gas. It's not really his style, but I would like to see it. For Senna, the you know, for Senna, the thing is like he is up against the strongest player in the group. This is the one player who was able to win every single game so far. So, or even gets into the main base. Senna tried to block that. You could really see him build a supply depot, but then the probe gets in. So this is for Senna really like annoying. I would feel intimidated being him going up against Creator now. Yeah, now Creator knows he didn't take the gases. Yeah, the probe's trapped in here, but Creator does not care, not even a little bit. He's elated, in fact, to know what's going on. Oh, this is just horrible. Uh, as an opener goes for Senna, it really can get into your head. Yeah. Creator even goes Zealot here and will go into a fast Nexus. I like what he's doing. Hmm. He needs to block the eBay. And... Uh, no. Yeah, no eBay here. No, he's just trying to block it for as long as possible. And he's actually delaying it for quite some time. Senna doing a good job here. Yeah, the Zealot, Again! The Zealot will turn this around, but there's the Nexus drop. No. Slight misstep by the SCV allows the probe to drop the Nexus. And in the main base we now have gas, whereas of course to the top right we have the command center now being built. Yeah, the command center here is exactly what Creator expects to see. He decides not to put pressure on with the Zealot. It's a bit too slow because of the SCV that was blocking the Nexus. And if he walks across, he's just going to be out in my crew. He holds the watchtower. Yeah, so for now we have both players going into expansion play. That Marine Santa really close to that depot. Luckily, it doesn't do damage when it explodes. We'll be way more realistic. <laughs> Thinking about out of the swamp, suddenly you have all this debris just floating around when you kill something with a new physics. You destroy it, and then suddenly one of those Marines can just hit by an iron bar. It drops dead. You've seen these ice maps, right? Yeah. Have you, are you good at ice skating, by the way? Define good. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm are, okay. You're okay, so you. When you go to the ice skating rink, you like don't need help, and you're no, 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 no. I'm fine. I mean, I'm probably not the best ice hockey player or anything, but I don't need help with one of those ice hockey rinks at all. I was just curious because I'm not that. Like I'm the guy who's like, no, I don't want to go ice skating. I, I'm really <laughs> slow and I fall over, and it's really embarrassing. I, I could see that. I saw you try to balance yourself at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> um. I. I have a lot of mental balance, but when it comes to standing on blades... You kind of lost your track of thought, though. You're always starting with the ice maps. Well, yeah, the, the ice maps is just... They, they're they what sent me on this tirade. I was just curious. This is actually just me probing into your inner self. Like, yeah. we know each other pretty well. We've known each other for a while now, but I never asked you if you are good at ice skating. never went ice skating with you. i never seen you ice skate. So I was like, well... You should do this someday. Yeah. You can actually do that at the airport. Yeah, actually, I found this out recently. Did you actually have a point with those ice maps, or did you just try? I mean, no, I just imagine. You imagine the it debris, again. Imagine the debris on ah, the ice okay. maps. That's what I was always going to say, and uh, the realism that goes into that. Like you have an avalanche going down. Yeah. Or what if the Marines just slip on the ice? Oh, that would be cool. Well, well imagine start... a stalker leg. <laughs> stalker leg. <laughs> uh, the Marines certainly don't slip on the ramp here. They actually hold their own against the stalkers, and this is the point where a, a creator has to back off because with the high ground vision that he lacks, he cannot really engage into the choke point. But he takes a very, very fast third base. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Creator, by the way, did not lose any hit points really on those stalkers during that micro. That was really nicely done. This might be one of the fastest that bases against Terran that I've ever seen. It's very old school parting style. You yeah. Know? It's usually when you do this, you add a bunch of gateways and then use the gateways to press your opponent so you can get your base up before his medevacs are ready. Put him on the defensive while he gets his medevacs out. He's really taking a bit of a risk here. Yeah. He wants to go to Code S now. And he watched, of course, all the games that Senna has played so far. Look at all those gateways that he's adding. Three additional ones will be on four in a second. Twilight Council, even with a forge. And he's still, he's still making sure that Senna is pressured. Senna's trying to move out with those Marines, but he's picking off Marine after Marine, wiggling away at those hit points and doing a great job at it. Wow, that was actually insanely well done. Yeah. Uh, Creator is one of those players whose multitasking is just off the charts. You cannot measure it. Um, in APM, you cannot measure it in just watching his screen. It's just his mind works on a different level than most processes. Factory comes over here with is about to find an unpleasant yeah. surprise. The APM in soccer is also a little bit weird with the different APMs that you now have. Yeah, I don't get me started on that. I heard, I heard a lot of things about New Harvest Swarm APM about like oh. people leaving two v twos and suddenly APM changes. I don't get that. But my personal opinion is this: that the new EPM is nothing else than the EPNIS medium. I was about to say that as soon as you said EPM. <laughs> Oh, it's like the E-penis meter. <laughs> it's the case, right? It's like all those guys on the forums are like, I have 300 EPM. I don't win, but I have 300 EPM. Yeah, well, that's... And then suddenly you have Elfie. Well, I have 40. <laughs> <laughs> I have Goody. I can top that. I have 20. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this this APM stuff comes and people figure it out in the future with tools like SC2 Gears, but this attack from center is slow. It's definitely late, and he... This is going to be his first glimpse, by the way, of the third base. He thinks he's going to try to attack at the natural and then go into the main, but he doesn't know is that Creator has had a third base up for so long. That center's like, I gotta get out of here! That is an army way bigger than mine, yeah. and I don't even have a third command center yet. Exactly, he doesn't have a third command center, he's just gearing up like crazy, trying to start these jobs, but we already have High Templars in the game. Actually, we don't, but we have the Templar Archive finished, so he could warp them in and then go for the feedback. As soon as he feels comfortable, he'll start Storm. He just wants to make sure he has enough units out to deal with this first. With the cannons and the zealots just warped in, he feels like, I can do this now. Mm. And he starts it. This and factory is not going to be helpful yeah. here. He has the storm, and he also is now with the cannon at the natural, where he can just make sure that there's no drop in the mineral line, has a few additional stalkers. Senna is just trying to catch up in the economy, but this is going to be so difficult for him. He's up against Archons, he has a decent amount of upgrades against him, but this is a really cool move now. Yeah, this move is nice. Creators multitasking, his unit splitting here is being tested. But look at that production! And now the SCVs are being taken out here. This is just, well, you can tell how ahead someone is economically with how much resource they can spend when you're holding that two base medevac push mm. and you're warping in eight zealots to attack your opponent's bane instead of warping them in to defend. That's how secure Creator's third base is right now. He played so greedy early on and if there would have been a big attack by Senna he would have lost quite a lot and maybe even the game. But Creator now, he took a risk, he ran with it and he is being rewarded big time now. Uh, Center is trying to power up more barracks so he can use that third base he will eventually finish, but it's not even done yet. Yeah, just, if you just look at Creator in general, he's at 67 harvesters against 47 SCVs. He has double forge in a few seconds for the upgrades, going to plus 3 armor now, whereas Senna is just researching his plus 1 armor upgrade. Did he just dance his zealots? No, okay, it was just looked weird when he was chasing the factory. <laughs> Ah, they did a moonwalk on the edge. Yeah, they? they were trying to jump out of the cliff. They want to jump on top yeah, of the Yeah, pulling a little bit of an MJ here, but... Uh, yeah, not quite. There's the plus one attack upgrade now with a finished second forge. The drop has been spotted Storm. already. Storm is ready. He does, in the main base, have a Templar warping in. He could be back. Yeah, there come uh, a few... There's the feet. Oh, wow! Just surviving. Barely. Here comes the Storm at the third. Warped in a few additional units, but he needs a lot more to deal with this drop. Yep. Looks like the units coming back in the main base will deal with it. He lost all of his warped in units. 
But Senner is desperate to do damage right now. He absolutely has to do something here. Yeah. Good effort by Senner so far. He realized that he is far behind the economy and is trying to do something about it. One medivac gets taken out, losing all the units here. But at the same time now, one is still in a position where he could do some damage. But Senna is really trying to to hit the weak spots of Crater. Yeah. Crater blocks his own uh, fourth base, by the way, with the pylon. He doesn't have to clean that up. Problem is that there are less and less weak spots for the Protoss. Yeah, he's just, he's bolstered his defenses. He has now double upgrades coming out with an accelerated rate with the Chrono Boosting. Center is stimming to run away. He only has a few medevacs on the map that are with his army. So many of them low on hit points and low on energy. And this is essentially the end of the game here. The Archons, if they get into that weakened bio ball, it's going to be a massacre of the storms oh. as well. Oh my god, he runs right into the storm and another one hits. Oh wow, this is too much damage for Santa to endure. Here come those Zealots and look at those hit points. They are so low already on HP. Those few medivacs cannot possibly do anything about this. Now there's somebody who's called a fire department because Crater is burning this up. Look at those SCVs. They're going to die to Archon so fast. Crater has done one of the most one-sided up and down escapes I have ever seen in my cast, casting history here at the GSL. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. He just dominated. Dominated this group and he will advance to Code S with a 4-0 record. No doubt about it anymore. Santa is trying to hold on, but this game is over. I mean, the opponents he played against are on a high level, but yeah. Crater just is above. GG, Crater, Colin Barakos, he's on a roll, back into Code S. Crater just playing so excellently, this entire group, really impressive play. Nothing out of the ordinary, just solid, standard macro play, good scouting, good build order choices, great micro, good decision making in the late game. He is, this is what it means to be a Code S player who should not fall down. This was really, really well done. And now we have one uh, Code S spot available. One has been taken, one has been claimed. Creator, he is going to Code S. And, uh, well, this means that we have now three players tied in scores. Uh, effort, Shine and Ryang. No, sorry, Effort, Shine and Center. Ryang has to play Killer now. Killer is already out. He's in Code A. So uh, for him, the match is not really important anymore. But, but it's really important for Ryang. Exactly. Ryang needs to win. If Ryang loses the next game, then he is out. There's no chance for him to advance anymore to Code S if he doesn't take the win against Killer. And Killer has been shown very aggressive play, very sneaky play. And I feel with him now being with his back on the wall, he can't really win anything anymore. I so he's probably going for very aggressive builds. I would expect to see no next eye in this game made by Killer. I, I think that he's a sandbag now. A sandbag player or a punching bag player is usually what you refer to someone who's in the group that people still have to play against, but he can no longer escape. And this is the situation Killer finds himself in now. Probably just going to do an all-in. Um, it depends on how he feels about Ryung, because yeah. he has to accept the fact that if he wins, he will drag Ryung into his position. If he loses, then, you know, he could... It's like doing Ryung a favor. Not to say that he would ever do that, but it's just... That's how the situation is right now. The Terran versus Protoss, that is what we are going to see next. For Killer, this match does not matter anymore. For Ryang, his life is on the line, his Code S life that is. He will, of course, if he loses, at least get the chance to play in Code A next season. It's not like he's dropping down into Code B, but still, top position to be in. Yeah, you never want to be in that first round of Code A going into a new expansion because, who knows, maybe an all-in that you've never even seen before comes out and it knocks you into Code B, and then you have to qualify in a new game. And yeah. That's just very uncomfortable. Well, Killer, we're just waiting for him to join the lobby and then we're going to start with the next game. Players are getting ready now. This is the part where every single match is potentially deciding the fate of a player. And in this case, it's the fate of Axiom Sriang. He's up against Killer on a whirlwind, a big, big map for Terran vs. Protoss. Yeah, Killer on whirlwind here, probably going to show us something unique. I would expect nothing less. Maybe even a two gateway, or I mean a two base zealot archon plus two armor type attack. Maybe with storm with only plus one. We've seen that a few times recently. Do you remember this game we had with uh, Squirtle where he was bored and he attacked yeah. into like eight bunkers? 
we could see something like that. Who knows? That was like one of the one of the best gifts ever. <laughs> yeah. Didn't someone make a YouTube uh, yeah, clip of that? Definitely. It, it works a lot better if you have the audio. Definitely look that up. Squirtle board GSL, something like that. Should be on Reddit. That that was definitely on Reddit. It was like on uh, rank one for quite some time. Yeah, Squirtle is bored. If you haven't watched it live, then definitely check that out. That was on. Uh, look at the up on YouTube. That was quite funny. Well, that could be a situation that Killer finds himself in here. He's on the opposite side, though. He, if he loses, then Ryung is in a better spot, where and he can't win. Whereas Squirtle was out no matter what; he couldn't lose. Yeah. Well, we're gonna find out if this is the last game for Ryung, or if he is actually gonna play for his life in Kodas. GSL up and down with Colin Wolf.